There's a reason Vostok has a cult following. Not many companies can elicit the emotional response that Vostok can. By the mere mention of its name, one might feel joy, disdain, or for the uninitiated, just plain confusion. Now, not long ago, I took a look at one of their more unusual offerings, a Komandirsky GMT. But this week, I'm gonna take a look at their second most popular watch, the amazingly affordable, mechanical, classic Komandirsky. For those that don't know, Vostok is a Russian watch company that can trace its roots back to the early days of World War II, when a factory was established in Chistopol to supply the troops on the front lines. Although they weren't known as Vostok until the 1960s, when they named themselves after the Soviet space program. Now Vostok is well known for two specific watches, the Amphibia Dive Watch, which I've already covered, and this Komandirsky Mechanical, of which the Komandirsky is the amphibia's older field watch brother, first going into production in 1962. Both the Amphibias and the Komandirskys are still made utilizing those basic Soviet-era designs. Now in essence, there are three main things you need to know about the Komandirsky line today. One, they are extremely affordable, usually costing around $40 US with shipping. Two, most of the Komandirskis utilize a very well-utilized mechanical movement, which means it only has hand winding. And lastly, it comes in a wide range of different cases and dials, many of which are well, let's just say they're colorful. Now this is model 811275, which utilizes a case type 81. Like all Komandirsky classics, the case is brass with a chrome coating. Now this is one of the smaller Komandirsky cases with a width of 39 millimeters without the crown and 43 with the crown. Lug to lug is about 44 millimeters, and it is a thin 12 millimeters tall. It utilizes 18 millimeter straps and is very light and weighs just over 60 grams. Now the finishing is decent, and since it's chrome coated, everything has that smooth chrome texture. One interesting thing on this particular case, the lugs come down to a very, very low point in fact, I think they're even lower than the case back itself, which to me kind of makes it look like the feet to a funky end table. Although this is considered a field watch, it does have a diver-like bezel, which is also made of brass. And like most Vostoks, it's a bi-directional, freely rotating bezel, which many do consider to be a negative Although one positive side is that it is easy to remove and change out to another bezel. In the long run, this specific one's going to be swapped to a compass bezel. Now, like its brother, the Amphibia, it also has a domed crystal. Although I don't think the Komandirskys is quite as tall. But it is made of that same plastic polymer, which I believe is Lucite. So the bad news is, that it will be fairly easy to scratch. But the good news is that you can easily buff out those scratches with toothpaste or polywatch. Also good news, you're getting a cool retro domed crystal for 40 bucks, and you can't beat that. Now let's talk about Vostok dials in general before getting to the specifics on this one. There are a ton of different dials and for the most part, they're all interchangeable with each other. And most of the dials are colorful, many of which feature military style hardware, such as fighter jets, submarines, 
aircraft carriers and um, cannon fire over sailboats. And in this case, cannons and a tank with some very oversized missiles. Now, let's be honest. For some of us, our adult selves are looking at this kind of design and are probably frowning on it. But meanwhile, our inner 13-year-old is loving it. Now, the rest of the dial is a flat, off-white coloring with even Arabic numerals for hours and a train track chapter ring painted on. There are also loom dots on those even hours, as well as a double loom dot above the red star for the 12 o'clock position. Just below the cannons, you have the Vostok and Kamandirsky logo, which is not a phrase you hear every day. At the very bottom, you have something which I assume means made in Russia, as well as a date cutout at the three. Now, like all Vostoks, having a date is a double-edged sword, as it's not a quick-set date. You have to advance the hour past midnight in order to advance the date, which can be an exercise in patience. Now, the hour and minute hands are matte black sword shapes with white loom, as well as a red second hand, which seems to be kind of a signature for Vostok. All in all, the design is highly effective as a field watch should, and colorful. It's definitely not something you would see every day. To the right, you have the signature Vostok wobbly crown, which if you're not familiar, means the crown is partially disconnected to protect the watch from a direct impact. So it wobbles when it's just sitting out. So in order to wind it, you need to put a little bit of pressure outwards on that crown. It may seem a little odd at first, but you'll catch on quick. And it is a brass screw down crown with chrome plating as well. Now, moving to the back of the watch, you have a steel case back, which is also a typical Vostok case back, where the case back sits just inside the case and an outer ring screws down to secure it in place. There are a number of Vostok case backs as well, all with different designs. And this one appears to be the Russian coat of arms. Now, unlike its dive watch sibling, this one only has a minimal water resistance, rated at only 20 meters. Now, I've said this in the past, but I really do mean it here. Try not to get it wet. So, Loom. It's okay. It's on par with other Vostoks, which means it's fairly bright at first, but doesn't necessarily last long as other brands, specifically Seiko's Lumabright. Now, it does utilize Vostok's in-house 2414A movement, which is a little more of a low beat movement at 19,800 beats per hour. And it has just a 36 hour power reserve. And in case you missed it earlier, it is just a mechanical. So hand winders only need apply. As far as accuracy, this one's decent, running about 12 seconds a day fast but they are fairly easy to regulate. And after some fiddling, I've got it running about negative five seconds a day, which I think is good enough. And that strap, well, it's technically leather. It's thin, lightweight, pretty much what you'd expect from a low end watch. Although personally, I swapped it out rather early for this green and white NATO from Barton. Although the watch does wear okay on that leather, just that strap really isn't for me. Otherwise, the watch wears as you'd expect. Depending on your tastes, 
it's either going to be the right size or a little small. But it's lightweight, easy to read, and I love how thin it is. It's basically everything you want out of a field watch. So if you're not familiar, most people get a Vostok either through eBay or through Marinone, as it will be shipped directly from Russia. And I would advise checking Marinome first. If nothing else, the website is fairly well done, and it's one place where you can see all the designs at once. And if you are looking on Marinome, look under the Kamandirsky Classics category, as you'll also see another one for Kamandirsky Automatics, which are a more modern line of field watches and different than these. Now prices do vary, but you should expect to pay around $40 US for a classic Kamandirsky with shipping. Although for that price, you are getting a well-made, affordable mechanical watch. One that's a cult favorite with history. Just be warned, it usually takes about a month to get to you. Now alternatively, there are occasionally Vostoks on Amazon and with prime shipping as well but these usually come with an added cost. Now the thing to remember about Vostoks in general is that the overall design is a little different than many of the watches you may be used to. After all, it was made with a Soviet era design philosophy in mind, which had an emphasis on easy to make, repair and use, and less on modern day refinements. For many, myself included, that's part of the charm of owning one. But it is something that you should know before getting into it. Although I will say that if you are interested in getting a Vostok, I would recommend an Amphibia over a Kamandirsky for $20 to $30 more, as it's a much more capable dive watch. But the Kamandirsky is still great at that price. And it's especially good if you're curious about mechanicals in general and don't want to spend a lot of money. As well as it can make a great gift and an interesting conversation starter. Not to mention a very affordable beater. They're also good if you're curious about getting into modding watches. As Vostoks are a great place to start as there are already a lot of interchangeable parts and the entry price point is very low. So if you screw something up, it's not a huge loss. And they're especially good for days that you just feel like wearing something different and unique. Now, Vostok has a lot of designs out there. So as long as you find one you like, in the end, that's all that matters. Now the Kamandirsky Classic and the Amphibia are Vostok's two most well-known watches. But they have some lesser known offerings out there, and I do encourage you to take a look. I myself have one of their newer amphibias on order, and that's an amphibia with a F, not a P. So hopefully that'll be here sooner rather than later. But in the meantime, let me know in the comments what you think. Do you like the Kamandirsky or the amphibia better? Or you don't want either of them. But let me know, and as always, if you enjoyed the video, like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.